In today's video, we'll be exploring 10 haram things to avoid in Islam. For those of you who don't know, haram is an Arabic term meaning forbidden. Acts that are haram are prohibited in the religious texts of the Quran and the Sunnah. If something is considered haram, it remains prohibited no matter how good the intention is or how honorable the purpose is. Some haram acts mentioned in today's video involve food, Others involve exhibiting certain behaviors and habits or engaging in certain activities. We've got some interesting facts for you today, so make sure you stick around all the way down to fact number one. Let's get to it. So our first thing on the list of harams are eating carrion, blood, or pork meat. The Quran is very clear about which meats are acceptable for consumption and which meats are considered sinful if eaten. It is a commonly known fact that followers of Islam must not eat pork products or meat that is still bloody and has not been thoroughly cooked. It is also forbidden to eat carrion or decaying flesh of dead animals. Any meat that is consumed must also be halal meaning the meat has been slaughtered and prepared as prescribed by Muslim law. Now, I found it very interesting that the Quran does mention that if one is in a state of starvation and has absolutely no choice but to eat these meats, out of pure desperation and survival that Allah is forgiving and merciful. In Surah 16, Ayah 115, the Holy Quran states that Allah has forbidden you only carrion and blood and the flesh of swine, also any animal over which the name of any other than Allah has been pronounced. But whoever eats of them under compelling necessity neither desiring it nor exceeding the limit of absolute necessity, surely for such action, Allah is much forgiving and most merciful. All right, moving on to talking about the making of statues and pictures. Allah describes himself as the almighty and original creator through titles such as Al-Khaliq, the creator of everything out of nothingness, and Al-Fatir, the bringer into existence, giving every living thing its particular nature, objective, and meaning. Now, there are many hadiths that discuss the sin of producing statues and pictures to imitate human form. These hadiths state that the image makers are cursed. They are called some of the most evil creations. They will be most severely punished on the day of judgment, and they will be punished until they breathe life into their creations. However, they will never be able to do that, and the angels will not enter houses in which there are statues. It is also believed that if a person, or an artist, really wanted to depict or create the essence of a human being by means of either painting or sculpture, he will then have encroached upon the rights and authority that belong to only Allah. And it is believed that those who compete with Allah in creation will receive the greatest punishment on the Day of Judgment, for that is a blasphemous act. Let's talk about marital relations. So there is some discussion about a wife refusing to engage in marital relations with her husband. On the basis of the following hadith, it is generally understood that if a wife refuses relations with her husband, she will be cursed by the angel. Abu Huraira reports from the Prophet that when a husband calls his wife to bed and she refuses, and as a result the husband spends the night in anger, then angels curse the wife all night until dawn. Bukhari. Interestingly, in Islam, it is believed that a husband and wife protect the chastity of one another by providing one another a legitimate means of satisfying their physical urges. This protection of chastity is essential for the preservation of the family unit. Hence, anything which puts chastity in jeopardy is disliked by the Almighty. However, it's important to mention that the basis of refusal by the husband or wife must also be taken into consideration. For example, if either of them is tired, sick, or simply not in the proper mood and in the appropriate frame of mind, then it certainly does not entail any wrath of the Almighty. It is only when a spouse starts to deliberately evade such natural needs of the other that the attitude becomes questionable. Fact number seven, the sin of spying and eavesdropping on others' private conversations. So according to Islam, it is not permissible to engage in Namima, which is malicious gossip, and spying on private conversations. Namima is considered a major sin as it involves sharing what others have said in order to cause trouble among them. The definition of Namima is also uncovering secrets and disclosing that which is not appropriate to disclose. 
Hence, followers of Islam should keep silent and refrain from telling everything that they see of people's situations, unless speaking of it will bring some benefit to a Muslim or to ward off some harm. This can be seen in the Quran, Surah 49, Ayah 12, where it is said, O ye who believe, avoid suspicion as much as possible. For suspicion in some cases is a sin, and spy not on each other behind their backs. Would any of you like to eat the flesh of his dead brother? Nay, ye would abhor it. But fear Allah, for Allah is oft returning most merciful. It is also narrated in Al Sahihain from Abu Huraira that the Prophet said, Beware of suspicion, for suspicion is the falsest of speech. Do not eavesdrop, do not spy on one another, do not envy one another, do not forsake one another, do not hate one another. Be, O oh, slaves of Allah, brothers. Al Bukhari. Next, we'll be talking about the sin of women appearing like men and vice versa. So according to Islam, Allah's curse is upon women who appear like men and upon men who appear like women. In his book, Lawful and the Prohibited in Islam, Yusuf al-Karadawi, the prominent religious scholar, writes, the Prophet declared that a woman should not wear a man's clothing or vice versa. He cursed men who imitate women and women who imitate men. Furthermore, the evil of such conduct, which affects both the life of the individual and that of the society, is that it constitutes a rebellion against the natural order of things. According to this natural order, there are men and there are women, and each of the two sexes has its own distinctive characteristics. However, if men become effeminate and women masculinized, this natural order will be reversed and will disintegrate. It is believed that among those who are cursed by Allah and his angels, both in this world and in the hereafter, the Prophet has mentioned that a man whom Allah has created as male, but who becomes effeminate by imitating women, and a woman whom Allah has created as female, but who becomes masculinized by imitating men. For this reason, the Prophet forbade men from wearing clothes or things pertaining to women. Fact number five brings us to talk about the sin of ending your own life. Now, as is common in many religions, ending one's own life is seen as a great sin. Allah does not permit his believers to intentionally end their own lives in any way. This can be seen through verses of the Holy Quran and Hadith. In Surah 6, Ayah 151, Allah says, And do not kill the soul which Allah has forbidden to be killed, except by legal right. This he has instructed you that you may use reason. In Surah 4, Ayah 29, Allah says, Nor kill yourselves, for verily Allah has been to you most merciful. If any do that in rancor and injustice, soon we shall cast them into the fire, and it is easy for Allah to do so. So essentially, Islam advises that life does not belong to us like property. Rather, it is granted to every human being as a trust. Neither is it allowable for a person to take another human's life without justification, nor is it permissible for one in Islam to destroy their own existence. God has declared both of these actions as grave sins. Let's take a look at some of the habits that are forbidden in Islam, such as drinking alcoholic beverages and gambling. Now, Islam does not permit believers to engage in behaviors such as drinking alcohol and gambling as they are deemed to be sinful acts. The Holy Quran states that for those who engage in these activities, in them is a great sin, and some profit for men, but the sin is greater than the profit. It also mentions that, O oh ye who believe, intoxicants and gambling stones and arrows are an abomination of Satan's handiwork. Abstain such that you may prosper. Satan's plan is to excite hatred between you with intoxicants and gambling, and to hinder you from the remembrance of Allah, and from prayer will you not then abstain. Fact number three, the sin of committing adultery or fornication. Now, chastity is defined as controlling oneself from forbidden desires due to the love of Allah the Almighty in response to his command as well as for seeking his reward in return. Islam has always supported the idea of chaste living and has thus legislated many laws that reduce the strong impact of these desires and control them. It has also encouraged remaining on the straight path and warned against giving into unlawful desires of the flesh. Fornication and adultery are forbidden and classified as major and destructive sins. Islam has even forbidden everything that could lead to these sins, such as immoral exchanges of looks between two sexes, 
depraved words, seductive moves, an unmarried and unrelated man and a woman being in a room alone together, and anything else which could lead to sin. In Surah 17, Ayah 32, Allah the Almighty says what means, and come not near to unlawful sex. Verily, it is a great sin and an evil way that leads to hell unless forgiven by Allah. This opens the road for other evils. When a man commits adultery, faith comes out of his heart and hovers above him until he leaves the sin. Then faith comes back to him again. All right, let's talk a little bit about the sin of not performing prayer. So, Salat or prayer, is the most important practice in Islam because it is daily worship. Since the Arabic word salat is rooted in the word silat, which means connection or contact, the best translation for salat is contact prayer. Like other religious duties, the contact prayers are a gift from God. It is believed that souls need nourishment just like the body needs nourishment from food. Without nourishment, souls will not grow and develop. It is believed that the five contact prayers are like meals for the soul. They are spread throughout the day, like meals for the body, and consist of dawn, noon, afternoon, sunset, and nighttime prayer. Those who do not develop their soul cannot be close to God because they will not be able to stand His immense energy. Thus, they will end up astray, away from God. Now, there are several passages in the Quran that address the importance of daily prayer. In Surah 19, Ayah 59, the Quran mentions that then there has succeeded them a posterity who has given up prayers and followed lusts. So they will be thrown in hell, except those who repent. And bringing us down to our fact number one, an action of sin is not fasting on a day of Ramadan without proper excuse. Fasting during Ramadan is one of the pillars of Islam, and it is not permissible for a Muslim to fail to fast it except without a reasonable excuse. Whoever fails to fast during Ramadan or breaks the fast during this time for a legitimate excuse such as sickness, travel, or pregnancy is required to make up the days that they did not fast. As for one who does not fast the month of Ramadan deliberately out of heedlessness, even if that is just one day of the month in the sense of that he does not intend to fast it at all, or he breaks the fast after having started to fast with no excuse, he has committed a major sin and must repent. Surah 2, Ayah 183 mentions, O you who have believed, decreed upon you is fasting, as it was decreed upon those before you that you may become righteous. With the above verse, the Holy Quran makes it very clear that fasting was ordained compulsory on all Muslims and that they have to fast if they are to stay righteous. All right, friends, that is all for today. Thanks for tuning in to our video on 10 Haram Things to Avoid in Islam. We hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully you learned a thing or two about some of the forbidden and sinful foods, acts, and behaviors in Islam. I know I certainly did. And as always, we want to know what you think. Was there anything about today's video that surprised you? Or maybe you have even more information to share with us. Leave us your comments below. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I've got another similar video for you below in the description section. So be sure to give it a click. Yep right there. All right, it's been a pleasure sharing with you today and I'm excited to see where our next video takes us. Be sure to check in daily for new videos on FTD Facts.